Hey everyone, Flying Dutchy here and welcome to our tutorial for complete beginners. This is episode 7. Last episode we have uh, we have done a couple of things, but most important we have taken a look at the diplomatic plays you can do and we started the war with Zulu. The war is now started and in this episode we are going to fight the war and we will play a bit more of the rest of the game. So we are going to maybe build, but at the moment we are not making that much money, so maybe we will wait a bit. And only our private construction sector will still build, of course. This is purely based, this nut button, to stop your production or your construction from your uh, national construction sectors. The private construction sector will continue. They are now trying to privatize a textile mill in Zweeland. Now I wonder if that is mine. We could use the money. Because we would get 150,000, so our credit will be a little bit uh, more more manageable. Uh, privatizing textile mills in Zweeland. No, they are going to the local workforce, so they are not going to uh, to privatize this. I need to take a look at another screen for privatization, but we will do that after this is done. So we have activated the naval invasion. We know we get a 33% penalty, because we have 20 convoys and a 30 army. You can stop this by putting a normal uh, another army in with 10 infantry. That is something you can do. We can make an army of 10 and 20. And then we could put 10 infantry out. Then we have 7 cavalry, 3 artillery and 10 infantry, which is a perfect mix because of 10 special units and 10 infantry that can do the invasion. That is something you can do. But the 33% penalty is the same as using 20, then, then I prefer to use 30 troops. Because the more troops can attack at the same time, I think it's a little bit better. We need to wait for uh, the boats and the armies to arrive over here. We are using some convoys for this. Oh, we failed the debate for the National Guard, so we have a minus 10%. Let's wait for the next tick. We still have 20% uh, chance to succeed. Great Britain has expelled our diplomats, damaging our relations. Great Britain doesn't like us anymore. They also doing their own plays, by the way. I don't like this, because now I cannot improve my relations, because we are expelled. That could mean that Great Britain goes against us in the next war. Maybe they are against us because we are next to their Cape Colony. Yikes. We also have a negative authority. Um, I'm going to cancel the promote social mobility so we have a little bit more because this gives a bit of uh, radicals and it gives uh, opposition interest approval minus one. I don't like that so I'm going to go to my capital and cancel the promote social mobility. Minus 30 doesn't do anything so I keep the minus 30. Now we have a lot of influence left now. Uh, we are improving with France, with Russia, with Austria, and we have Prussia trade agreement. With who are we going to improve relations then? With the US? The US is a great power. They are colonizing uh, America. So yeah, let's let's get, let's get good relations with the United States. The Ottomans is also a great power, but the Ottomans are very weak. They are called the sick men of Europe. In almost every game, the Ottomans are going down. Okay. Spain is improving relations with us. Okay. Good. Uh, let's go back to the normal outliner. Now we have 21 boats. So one extra boat got uh, recruited. So we have a little bit of a less penalty when we invade. But the navy is there. And when... When you do a naval invasion, you get this button over here. So we have 30 against 19 with 25, 21 boats against 0. Let's click on it. Well, let's, let's take a look at this first. The naval invasion will fail if our fleet is defeated. Or if we lose 3 land battles with 0 landing progress. We'll take a look at that, what that is soon. Let's click on it. This is sea node in the Natal coast, which is this sea node over here. We have 21 boats, they have 0 boats. 
Then in Zululand, we will be the invader with this army. And this will be the defending army with 13 and 6. And here once again, we will see when we will fail, if the fleet is defeated or when we lose 3 land battles with no progress. You can cancel the invasion over here. You can also see all the battles, but we have no battles yet, so... But that will change when this army will arrive. We'll let the army arrive. Also, you see this number over here? This is uh, your war support. It will slowly go down by war exhaustion, as you can see for Zulu, and also us. And that goes per... Per week you get minus 25, but we have a little bit of a radical population, so the more radicals you have, the quicker your war support will go down. And we don't like that, of course. And the same goes for Zulu, but they have no radicals, so they are doing a great job. Now, when this goes to zero, there is no more initial war support. And this needs to go to minus if we want to win the war. So war support cannot be reduced to below zero, because neither... Their capital, nor the war goal, has been occupied. We need to conquer Zululand before we get a, yeah, some sort of ticking war score to the downside, before we can actually peace out. Now, what happened? There is no naval, there's no naval fight, because they don't have any ships, so we instantly landed our troops on the shore. And we can see it over here, that there is a battle. 22 of our troops are fighting against 19 of Zulu. They have 10 and 8. We have way better stats. So we can click on this battle. Now we can see what is going to happen. We are in the farmland. So that is going to be very helpful I think. Because this commander is having a farmland bonus. It doesn't tell us why we have a certain offense though. That is annoying is it? At the start of the battle... We are using 22 of our battalions. Why is that? Well, 30 of our battalions are landing. That is a whole army. Um, we are limited by the terrain and infrastructure. The infrastructure of Zulu land is only 18, so it goes to minus 8. So 30 minus 8 is 22. The start of the battle on Zulu... They have no penalties. They just have their troops stationed in the state and defending. So we have 19 here. So we have 22 against 19. And the battle is now going to start. Uh, you can see which maneuver has been taken by the game. We have careful maneuver. We get less casualties and we don't lose our morale that quickly. And what do they have? Poor visibility. So they have minus 25 offense and minus 25 defense. So that's a very good start of the battle. And in 10 days it will change. You can see over here. So let's take a look in 10 days what the uh, the traits are going to be. I will lower the speed here. And now you will see what will happen over here. We see how many people are dying. How many people are wounded. Which will become dependent. So they immediately know that 95 of our population will no be longer be able to work. And we have demoralized units. Now you can see we are killing way more than we are. So things are going very well. You can also see the slider. And the slider is going this way, which is good for us because this is Sweden, that is Sulu land. And when we win a battle, we get landing progress. This is purely based for the naval landing. So we'll let the game run. In a couple of days we are going to change the... Uh, the traits doesn't really matter because we are going to win this battle. There we go. We have pursuit. Uh, we get more combat with and less morale loss. And they have panicked retreat. Because they know they are not going to win. I'm not sure where these traits are based on. I am not very skilled in these traits and how they work. But it's looking good for us, right? Uh, their morale is 80%. We have 92. What we could have done is put the budget on our military wages to the maximum. Then we get more morale recovery. But I don't think we need it for this war. There we go. We are going to win. 
One more unit fighting. 30, 20 people, 4 people, 0 and win. We won 27 occupation in Zululand. Why is that? I don't know. But we have 27 landing progress in Zulu. Successful attack. 500 people are dead, 6000 people from Zulu are dead. What is going to happen now is that my army is going to do a new fight. Uh, when we click on the naval invasion. Is it immediately going to fight again or not? I don't see if it's building up like a normal attack. Well, there's the next battle. So we can see that we won one battle. And there's the next one. And we can see that their morale is only at 54%. So we are going to win this very quickly. They do have the Charter Terrain Kill Rate. And we have Rapid Advance. So we get more provinces captured. Not sure if that helps for our naval invasion. But we are winning this super quickly. No, again 27. So we need to do this two more times. And then we have landed. There is the next battle. 82%. And there is the next battle. Boom. We immediately take the state as well, I think. And that means that we also immediately capitulate Zulu. And that means that this is no part of Sweden. We did conquer five troops. From Zulu. Because there are five barracks over here. Could put them on general training, but I'm not sure if people can do this in the state. Um, these are of course very bad troops, but I think we're going to keep them. Uh, what we can do is upgrade these troops towards line infantry. Let's go for it. And then I will combine these armies together. We have conquered this state. And that means that we now have access to uh, cotton plantations and tea. And that's it. We don't have dyes here, which is annoying, but we don't have it. Let me take a look at this state. Uh, yeah, it's saying that this control, but this should go away. This thing should go away because we already won the war. When you win the war, your armies will immediately demobilize themselves. You can demobilize yourself. When you are not at war, they will uh, stop being mobilized. So soon we should uh, not spend that much money anymore on military goods. Because the war is over. It's saying failed invasion, but that is not, not the case. Because we already won the war. And yeah, now it's gone. This state has 0% market access to the Swedish market, because this is no part of my own market. When we click on the market thing, you can see that this is no part of Sweden. Unable to connect to the Swedish market by land, and Zululand has no port. We need to build a port here, so that the people over in this state can make use of my market. They can maybe buy some grain. Maybe they have their own grain, of course. Click on the local prices. And yeah, they have a very good amount of... So they are actually fine-ish. But as you can see, we have a huge turmoil. The people don't like it that we uh, have, that we took this uh, this colony. And that makes sense because these uh, these cultures are all discriminated in, the, in us. And also their religion is discriminated. Let me take a look at the buildings. We do have some manor houses here actually. We get a logging camp, a fishing wharf. So we get all these stuff in our market, including some tea. Right now we have no tea in our market because there is no port here. So we could give tea to some people. Uh, so what I will do here is build a port. Click the plus button here. Then I click on the port and make sure that it's going to be an anchorage and not a cargo port. We don't need the infrastructure and it is very expensive to do a cargo port. So I just do an anchorage here. That is enough to get market access. And maybe we should do that first, actually. There we go. Um, now we are still not making any money. I have a feeling that we are going to get some troubles. 
We do have some unrealized taxes because we have a bureaucracy problem. Um, the interest is still very bad, of course. The military wages. I think we need to uh, make some people a little bit angry. By doing this. This is going to be very bad. We lose legitimacy and we get a lot of radicals. As you can see, we have a huge amount of radicals now. That is most likely because they are over here. I think. These radicals must all be from the state, but I cannot see why. Yeah. I don't know if that goes away. Let me take a look. They are all peasants over here. Can I see if they are radical? Yeah, there they are. From this pop group, 261 are radicals. And it makes sense because they will always be uh, discriminated over here. It's a colony. Now this is not an incorporated state. There's a difference between an unincorporated state and an incorporated state. Uh, this one is now an unincorporated state. That means that they have no access to voting. Uh, they have no access to my institutions. Uh, but they also don't pay any taxes. So they have to, don't have to pay anything here. And they don't, don't cost any bureaucracy to maintain. Uh, we also don't want to incorporate it this state. Because the literacy over here is 6.9%. And that's going to make my average literacy lower. Because your literacy rate is based off the incorporated states. So we don't want to incorporate Zululand. Maybe ever. We want to use this as a colony. But yeah, they don't pay any taxes over here, so yeah. We have a new heir, let's take a look. We have Prince Henry, who is part of the landowners. Okay, well, if this king dies, we don't want this one on the throne anymore. Because we don't want, like the landowners. Hopefully we will change our uh, government to a uh, presidential republic or something. Okay, we slowly make a little bit more money. Let's try to get this interest... Uh, going up. Uh, down, of course. We have a speech. We can get enactment chance for the National Guard. Let's get that one. Uh, I will unpause. I want to make that port. It's going to take a long time because the people are radical here. But since we have level 3 uh, police force, we have only minus 33 and not minus 50. So we need to build the government building. And the port. So let's build those two first. We need the government building to get our taxes up. Because we are losing 3000 in taxes at the moment. Because we have a bureaucracy penalty. So let's see if we can get this up. We are losing a huge amount of money by the way. What we need is our private construction sector sending money towards us. And they will. Because they are privatizing a textile mill still. No, that's not, that's not going towards me, I think. Never mind. No, we have 1.3 million credit. Let's take a look next week. Let's go to speed 4. Yeah, it doesn't go to ours. Now they are expanding the tooling workshops in Norland. That should go to me when the money is there. You can see that the current weekly change is increasing. This was 9000. Now it's 11000. Because we have more and more people becoming rich in our country. And they can reinvest their money. So it's going the right way. But we are still uh, very poor. Our army, yeah, that is because we have um, 
We have no port. We have a shortage over here. Scania is having some market access problems, but it's only at 1%. It's going all, all right. So yeah, this army is having no commander. But yeah, it's very logic that we get that message. Let's merge the both armies. We can do this. Transfer military units to another army. We click the other army here. And we select all the line infantry to go towards there. Boom. And now we have 35 troops, 25 infantry in this army. And that means that we need another commander or upgrade this one. But let's see what we have. Uh, I'm going to upgrade this one, I think. Let's go and make this one to level 2. We can promote. Now we can have 60 troops. And that makes the armed forces a little bit more popular. Because he is now the next level commander. Okay. Let's go to speed 4. Now we see another play here. There's a religious revolt, a revolt in Nova Scotia. Why do we see this? We see this because we have an interest over here. So what we can do is support some of these. But I'm not interested. So I will click declare neutrality. And then it removes. I'm not going to be meddling over there. We have some trade routes that are inactive. Let's take a look at our trade routes. Liquor is not going. Let's click the inactives away. Because that is also costing us bureaucracy. For nothing almost. Uh, the revenue is fine on these. We are exporting meat. Because meat is still very cheap. Take a look at our goods here. Can we export more meat? No, no one likes meat. So we cannot really do this. Our cloth price is super cheap. Which is nice. But yeah, our money situation, not so great. Thermal is slowly going away over here. When uh, Zulu is having access to my market, people will become happier. Because uh, locally, they don't need the wood, but on my market, they can sell it a little bit easier. And yeah, fish, well. We also have a cotton plantation now. And guess what is very cheap in our country? Fabric. Because of our trade route. We could cancel it. Monument to the king. Get a little bit more prestige or we will make the armed forces angry. Yeah, let's get the prestige. And our king is intervening in our debate. Because we, got, we are an oligarchy. Uh, our king is saying, and I want this. And we can go to consideration immediately. It makes the intelligentsia angry. We can do this. We get 10% and it still makes them angry. Or we get no success chance. Well, let's make them angry then. Since we are going to make them angry anyway. There we go. So we are getting investment pool transfer because they are done by getting the funds and now they are upgrading. Uh, they are building a tooling workshop for the first time in Norland. That gives us a little bit of money. But as you can see, we are not making that much. We can, we can make a lot of money because we are using 13,000 on construction. So I think after the port has been built, we will cancel construction for a little bit and get rid of our deficit because 3.3 thousand is a lot at this point in the game, at least for Sweden. What is this? Steel import. Why are we only making 18 in our steel mill? Let's take a look. Well, they are hiring people. I don't know what happened with the steel mill. But they are hiring again. No idea what happened. Yeah, we need the steel for so many things, so... 
We absolutely want to make the steel. It's a very profitable building. Our laborers are at 9. They only need 7, I think. Uh, they even only expect 5 at the moment. So they are completely fine over here. And there we go. We have our steel price going up. And that problem is solved. Now this button is because Zululand is isolated. Because we have no port over there. And that port is now getting built. It takes a very long time. Because the people are having turmoil over there. The 35%. So don't click this button. You don't want to incorporate your colonies. Because then your literacy rate goes down. And your innovation. We have failed the debate. It's fine. We no longer have our bureaucracy penalty. So... Yeah, the, the penalty is gone from Texas Collection. Let me just let the game run like this. Now I have a 35 army, which is pretty nice, in my opinion. The amount of radicals hopefully is going down. But yeah, most people are now getting angry because I'm taxing them more. And the government people getting less money. So, not ideal. Having so many radicals. But most of the radicals, once again, are from our colony over here. And yeah, some people are just very angry. Especially our peasants. Because most of the people are peasant over here. 86% in this state is peasant. And they are very angry. I wish you could see why they are angry. Well, they are discriminated, so I guess that will always stay. There's no good breakdown in this game why people are radical. It makes sense that they are radical. But why? Intensive agriculture is unlocked. We can now unlock a fertilizer plant. We can make fertilizer with iron and sulfur. We have sulfur in Norway, so that is in our market. And we can build an explosives factory. Also from fertilizer and sulfur. But we can now do something with our farms and our livestock ranges. We can now do the soil enriching farm. We can use some fertilizer to make more grain. Let's take a look at these buildings. So we have the farms, the millet farms and the livestock ranges. You can see there is a question mark. I mean, an, uh, how do you call that thing? I don't know. I forgot the English name. Please let me know. Oh no, it's an exclamation mark. I already know. So we can change something. We can now go and put all our farms in our country on soil enriching farming. But then we need 46 fertilizer. And we don't make that right now. We will fire laborers and we get more farmers. We like that. Farmers are richer and they also contribute to the investment pool. So how do we get that then? Well... We can get some from increased wool gathering from all our livestock ranges. It is only a little bit though. As you can see, we are going to uh, use grain to make a bit more uh, fabric and fertilizer. So let's do this on all our, uh, all our livestock ranges. It's saying it's not profitable because we are not using it yet. But that will change when I click this button. So, accept. We could also make more meat, but the meat price is already very low. So, let's not do this. And now what we can do is use that... Is use the fertilizer that we make. On the farm. But if I do this, that will be too much, I think. Let's click it anyway. We're going to use fertilizer to make more grain. take a look at one of our things. Okay, fertilizer is now very expensive. Because we are using more fertilizer than we create. And I also think I'm going to cancel my trade route. Just gives a little bit of tariffs, the fabric one. But uh, What we can do is keep it like this. 
but that does mean that the farms are going to be less profitable I think because they need to pay a lot for the fertilizer can we import some fertilizer not really now what I can do is cancel some of these buildings and not use fertilizer I think that's what I'm gonna do um, of course in eastern Norway we have no access because that is another country uh, what I can do is put some back to simple farming for now that will lower the fertilizer price if I do it only in Scania yeah that's better right we have normal fertilizer price normal tool price and we make a little bit more this way so let's keep it like this for now we will change that later in the game when we will build a fertilizer uh, plant but we have no economy for this right now okay our investment pool is growing while they are waiting to build something so that is good news they want to build a food industries in Jutland. we don't have a food industries yet so that is pretty nice to have I think the investment pool is getting uh, filled and not used so let's take a look if that is correct need to keep an eye out for this every week because then we can build a couple more construction sectors and there we go we were waiting for this technology to get the atmospheric engine we can put the atmospheric engine pump on all our mines so let's take a look at our mines and the rural stuff Let's uh, put the farms back like this. We cannot change the production method of our, all our iron mines. We now make 20 iron out of 5 tools. We can use 10 tools and 10 coal for 40. So we can double the amount of iron we are going to make. It's going to become very cheap. And we need to use more tools and coal. So at the moment the game says to me, Dutchie, you should not do this. Because it will lower your productivity. Yes, that is true, but I will do it anyway, because later in the game we are going to need this anyway. So we will click this. Now the iron mines are not profitable. We will make more coal, because we have only one coal mine. And we also don't use the iron right now that much, I think. Okay, let's see if we have enough coal. No. So we also need to build more coal. What I can do is turn some back to normal. The ones in Sveeland are now normal. The ones in, in Jotaland are now using coal. Now you, now you can see that the coal price is better. So we make a little bit more iron this way. And what we need to do is get a couple more iron mines. I think two. There's my iron mines. I mean coal mines, but I, I mean coal mine, of course. So let's build two more coal mines in Scania. To get the things going. And once again, there we go. That is Victoria 3 for you. You always need to build. I think we need to build this as well. And yes, our interest is going up. We have a stall for our law change. Let's pick the one that is the... This one is better, but we use, lose a little bit of bureaucracy. But it's fine. Okay, the port is almost built finally. One more week. That should change a lot of things over here. Of course people need to start working here first but that is happening and then they will finally have market access and hopefully that will help a little bit with the turmoil am I going to keep building the coal mines or do I stop building for now let's build the two coal mines and then we stop building no I'm gonna stop building now we need the money guys This is getting out of hand. The interest. It does mean though that my private construction sector can build more things at the same time I think. 
because they are now working on and the tooling workshop and the food industries. Nice. We'll take a look at these later. The production methods of the uh, groceries. There we go. Now they have mar access to the market. More people can work at the logging camp and keep the price of wood low. And now my tea is getting access in the Swedish market and people love tea. There are 30 pops that will like uh, tea in uh, Sweden. So the people here can work on the tea plantation. Laborers and farmers. Which are actually having not a bad life. Well, they are discriminated. So that is bad. <laughs> but money-wise, they are fine. <laughs> How does that even work? <laughs> you can see that everyone is hiring right now. Because they now have access to the uh, market. And that means that we now have our first banana plantation. Which gives fruit. And we didn't have fruit for a very long time. So more pops can now buy fruit as a substitution for food. So you can see that the pop consumption for fruit is going up. Because people think when they look at the market. Hey, I can buy cheap fr fruit instead of uh, uh, expensive groceries or grain. I'm going to buy fruit. That is the banana plantation. The cotton plantation is a bit meh. What I can do, because we can make 40 over here with basic production, is cancel my trade route with China. Because we are importing 300 fabric. Let's cancel that one. That is going to mean that my cotton price in the market is getting higher. Unfortunately, the price in Zululand is way more different than the Swedish market. That is because in Zululand the Mappy is 75% and not 85%. So even if the Swedish market meets 24% higher price, it's not in Zululand unfortunately. But we can change that hopefully later in the game. It's an unincorporated state is always minus 10%. So that is very yikes. But people are going to work here apparently. Uh, we are having some wine. Wine is very cheap in my country. I think I'm importing wine. Let's cancel that one. We have our own wine. There we go. People are making a little bit more money over here. Um, so the tea is going very well. We can make a lot more tea plantations and all the people over here can work on the tea and everyone is having tea in my country. Who is using tea? Can I click on tea and get more information about tea? It's consumed by pops of wealth from level 15 and higher as luxury drinks only. Okay. A millet farm here. We're gonna work there. The fruit is coming along. Alright. Uh, what we can do. Oh, yeah, we are making fertilizer locally over here. So we can go to the millet farm and use that fertilizer. Let's go for it. Okay. So when we are not building, we are almost not making any money, which is horrible. Government is... We need to pay so much for the government. I think we need to slowly get rid of our credit. If we don't do this... I think we're gonna get a problem. I really think so. It's going very slowly, of course. Now the maximum credit it goes down it goes up as well because the credit is for your own people. If you get more rich people, the credit you can get in your country should go up. It's going down, but it should go up. 
well, now people are working a bit more, so we have more laborers in this in this state. Uh, we do have maximum relations with Austria, so let's cancel that, uh, that thing there. Can I in talk to Britain again? No. Let's improve with Spain. Because they're also improving with me. And yeah, I think I'm going to uh, stop the episode here. I wonder what we should talk about next time. I think we're going to talk about the building registry. And just keep playing the game. Uh, we still need to talk about companies. Uh, we will do a war against Denmark, so we can maybe form, hopefully, Scandinavia later in this this uh, this playthrough. I will just skip to the moment when we can. Yeah, we just keep playing the game. I think I've talked about most of the things. And uh, yeah, we will just go over the things while we are playing. So maybe it's getting a bit more clear while we play the game here. Um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to give your thumbs up, give the subscription. And uh, ask me anything in the reaction tab if you have any questions. Maybe other people can take a look there as well and answer the questions. And I see you in the next video. Bye bye.